So one of the things I get asked most about emotional support animals or ESAs is what happens with tenancy agreements and public landlords? That's actually a great question because I can tell you from my own experience that there are very, very few private landlords that will actually allow pets. They even state it in the tenancy agreements. Unfortunately, it is the case that a lot of owners are having to say goodbye to their beloved pets because of this situation. And also the fact that the majority of people who privately rent are single then having to say good to your pet is basically like saying goodbye to your only companion and that can be heartbreaking but worry not Sally Queen Boy is here to show you that not all is lost and hopefully this video will bring some education to some landlords as well in fact if you are having any issues I strongly suggest showing them this video so without any further ado let's begin shall we This, everyone, is Ghost. He's about two and a half years old now and I've had him since he was five weeks old. And yes, he's my emotional support animal. And by the way, the footage of him that you're watching right now is actually taken in the flat that we live right now, which actually stated in the tenancy agreement that they didn't allow pets. But thankfully we got that sorted. You see, the situation was is that I needed to get a place fairly quickly and this place is going and it was right by where I used to work and when I was signing the tenancy agreement I kind of got into a survival mode and my anxiety and everything kind of kicked in so I just signed the tenancy agreement just so I'd actually have a place to live without thinking of the consequences that you would have on Ghost. If anyone can relate to this it's basically I saw red at the time except I didn't exactly kill anyone at the time I was just running on autopilot and it's only after signing that tenancy agreement and the fact that I left the building that it kind of hit me on the way back that ah uh, I'm gonna lose ghost so in my episode of panic I called my wife and explained exactly what was going on and luckily straight away she got on the phone to estate agents who I just left so when she spoke to them she explained the fact that I needed ghost for my emotional support the fact that I'd be able to get documentation from the doctors if I needed it and the fact that made no noise or anything like that and he's well trained so about 20 minutes later I got another call from my wife explaining that they'd agreed so the ghost would be able to remain on the property just so if anyone had to come into the building like the landlord or electricians or anyone who had to do maintenance or anything like that that even though he's free roam I'd be able to secure him when I needed to. We explained what we did to bunny proof the apartment and they were more than happy about that. And honestly, I don't know what I'd have done if they weren't. And I can tell you that at the time of recording this video, Ghost and I have been here for a good six months to a year now. And we're flourishing. So the point of me telling you that is that even though the landlord has no legal obligation to let that pet onto the property, there's still a chance that they will let them. Just as long as your request is reasonable. Let's put it this way. So from the landlord's point of view, they pretty much have a business to safeguard. Okay, so in this case, a business might be renting their properties out to people who need a home, but it's still a business where they're making money out of the people. They're basically needing to make sure that they're not going to lose any money. So after all considerations, if it does look like there's going to be no risk of damage or make any noise, which Ghost doesn't. I mean, come on, he doesn't exactly meow or bark like a cat a dog and I can keep the place tidy and maintain the place properly and yeah I did actually get lucky here because a lot of landlords are uneducated naive or they just basically don't care they just don't want to know and yes yeah, some are likely to just dismiss you without a second thought and yeah, that has actually happened to me before too. But at the very least, it's actually worth putting a document together just for their information. At least you can say you gave it your best shot. And the thing is, assuming that your pet does benefit your mental health and it's your emotional support animal and you have proof that you suffer from something like anxiety or depression, they're much more likely that they don't really want to tread on eggshells here and they don't want to make the situation any more worse than it already is. It's more likely that they'll want to see how it goes especially in our day and age where mental health is becoming more and more of an issue for people that they don't really want to make the matter worse for anyone especially when it comes to potential tenants and yet yeah, it is really such a shame that ESAs aren't legally accepted like they are in the US yet 
But that being said, we do still have a long way to go before they are. However, what I have done, I've taken the liberty of including a petition in the description of this video just to, you know, hopefully move things on a bit. And also, if you want to support the channel as well, I've took the liberty of including a few affiliate links to things like harnesses and stickers etc with the words emotional support animal and things that you can take to a private landlord or the airport so if anyone does need to know then you've actually got something there to say yeah that's my emotional support animal and also if you have got any value from this content that i'd like you to consider booping the like button and subscribing to this channel if you want any further content on mental health tips and mental well-being because it's like i always say at the end of the day it gets dark